So we have arrived. And wow, I was just saying, it's been a long time since I've been able to cast Huang. Uh, Huang is a player known for picking Celts. I have quite a few videos on Huang. Uh, the Legend of Huang. The Legend of Huang Part 2. I'm sure there's many more. And Huang these days is known for playing a lot of Celts. But more than anything, what you should know is that Huang is just not known for ever doing random Civ. He'll play like the same three or four civilizations. He doesn't play in tournaments. He just ranked, 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 ranks, and spams a lot of those civilizations. Um, we'll see what Huang does here. Spanish are definitely top three on any Nomad map. Uh, I, I shouldn't say any Nomad map because it can depend, but at least on African Clearing, they're also top three. Just like uh, Nomad 1v1s. This is a civilization you want because they build faster. The TC's up right away, and they're a great fast castle civilization into the Conquistador. So you can see already at the start of the game, Huang says, yo, I want stone, and I want that TC up right on my most important resource. Over here, we have Bloodless, who is an arena-style player. Um, it's very common that players who like Arabia, like Huang, and then like arena, like Bloodless, will meet in the middle. Uh, on maps that have not been banned by either of them. And so we have African Clearing here. I wouldn't say that this is necessarily uh, the best Civ, but I am curious to see how the Bengalis operate. Because the Bengalis get plus two villagers when they arrive to, the each, to each age. Uh, the Bengalis now get, I guess, elephant archers as a whole are cheaper, and oh god, Bloodless is going to lose. Dude, use a house. Bro, okay, that could have been really bad. Still could be really bad, actually. He's bringing this elephant way faster than I would suggest you do so. Uh, okay, but he gets the elephant in, no problem. Woo! <laughs> yeah, so the Bengalis are a new Civ, and basically everyone has considered them to be, for lack of a better word, crap. Ever since they've been introduced to the game. I do have some uploads where the Rathas, the unique unit, has been used a bit. Seems like that's a unit that is not the strongest now that it's been figured out, but still has some cool potential. The Civ getting plus two villagers from their TC every time they arrive to each age, though, is a nice little eco bonus. Uh, I also think now the Bengalis have plus three. Oh, yeah, I forgot. So just yesterday when the patch came out, the Bengalis received plus three melee and plus three pierce armor on their monks. So if this is. You know, if you're expecting Conquistadors, and you should always expect Conquistadors, uh, we might see Fast Castle Monk, possibly, for Bloodless. In theory, if you don't lose Villagers, you're going to have a slight Vill lead because of getting the additional Villagers when you arrive to the next stage. But also, Huang is like a Vill and a half up because the TC was up that much faster, so I don't think it's going to really make things all that strong. Okay, Huang has to do the house save as well now. And wow, okay, so we've had multiple instances where these elephants are going to get kills. And Bloodless saved villagers, and now Huang has at least so far saved the villagers. All right. So Huang doesn't have many sheep scouting, I've noticed. Actually, I'm wrong. This is something you definitely want to do on this map. Especially because a lot of your food income will come from the elephants. Then also the shorefish, if you want to mill them. Uh, Huang is also very much stuck in the middle of the map which might be good for him because he wants to be kind of in people's faces but uh i also like the security of being towards the corner so far i'm expecting fast castle from both it's at a high level almost always a fast castle map i think going scouts at mid to low level is never a bad strategy on this map necessarily but players at this level are just gonna wall it up and keep your villagers safe. Um, especially if you're in the corner, right? You get scout rushed and you're here, you have more problems with expanding. But the big reason that it tends to be a nomad start, <clears throat> or sorry, the, the fact that um, nomad starts tend to be more fast castly at a high level is because your town center is right on top of resources. If it's Arabia, your stone is a certain distance away. Your gold, your berries, every, your wood, everything's far away. Here you've got wood and you've got stone. And so there's just less resources that are exposed, which is why you tend to see Fast Castle play be the choice more often than not. That combined with the fact it is Huang, and Huang just loves his Fast Castling in general. 
Oh wow, okay, Bloodless also has good scouting. I don't think there's been any sheep lost at Huang's TC. And it doesn't look like Huang has lost any sheep over at Bloodless's town center. They don't exactly know where each other are located right now. Yo, Tomas, I'm with you. That instance there with Bloodless, I would always lose the weak villager. Elephants and boars, they always try and go for the weak ones for me. But uh, maybe it's like an, another RNG aspect of the game. Okay, so I think that's the third elephant from Bloodless, if I'm doing the math correctly here. Plus has the food from some shorefish. Wong is on the way up at 21 population. He's actually using a gold miner just to push in a little bit of extra food there. Nice job from him. He brings it right underneath the town center. No problem. Uh, also has some of the zebra over here. Will be able to afford what he needs with wood. Wow, Huang is like... He does everything at the limit. He doesn't ease into anything. Look at this. He's like, I have 370 wood. Why would I have anything on wood? I need this resource right now for this goal. Smart thinking from Huang. So they, it also doesn't have to make a mining camp on the stone. The only thing he might be a little light on is gold. And I think he's realizing that as he's sending some more villagers over. If I had to guess right now, I would say Huang probably goes blacksmith market. And then if the gold isn't immediately there, we'll probably just sell what's left of the wood. But notice, no lumber camp. So no wood upgrade for the long run. Huang is just not a long run player. He's very aggressive and builds up towards an attack. If that attack doesn't work, usually the game's over. Or he's going to have some big struggles. Yeah, Wrath is a, an interesting unit. The problem is, whether it's in melee or in range, they get destroyed by skirmishers. Raz. Which is pretty much what you said. Like, I really like the concept of the unit. I think the devs did a, their best job with the concept of the Ratha. I think it's way more interesting than, say, the Gulam or any of the other unique units for these newer civs. But, uh, but yeah, it's just the armor class that becomes an issue. Long is scouting for the enemy right now. Clicks up to Castle Age. See, just so much faster than Bloodless. Like, th this is insane. And Bloodless hasn't done anything wrong, really. It's just a good build order with the Spanish. Wong doesn't have any wood, though. <laughs> he can't even... Well, I guess he won't need many houses if he gets the castle, but... This is going to be super aggressive. Now, here he goes, Huang. Still looking for the enemy. This is really smart. Like, I would maybe go fast castle like Huang is doing in the way he's doing it, but I don't think I would send the Ville. And now he's found stuff. So now he knows the enemy's somewhere over here. And that's a really big deal because he doesn't want to waste any time. He's going to make an outpost there. And so that'll be probably be the first destination for his conquistadors. Mm. So Bloodless is likely going to go for monks here. Bloodless is starting to wall up. Bloodless could also see this villager and understand that that means Huang has an idea of where he's at. The walls are going to hold off conks for a while. Um, that villager is going to end up getting out of here most likely. I don't think I would follow for that long if I were Bloodless. Bloodless needs to go double monastery here. Now, does the extra pierce armor and melee armor help against conquistadors? I don't think so, right? Conks don't do pierce damage. Oh my god, and Huang's running forward with it. I mean, why not? <laughs> He's going to back... I mean, Legend of Corner Boy is going to be Legend of Corner -er Boy as Bloodless is going to get smushed. Now, Huang doesn't know about the walls going up there, so he's probably like, why am I pathing that way? And thought about the castle there. Now he's going to place it here. Uh, Bloodless is so dead. <laughs> Bloodless is so dead. And Bloodless goes, ah, I'm being rushed with the taunt. Yes. And Huang says yes. Knowing Huang, he's probably going to buy some wood here. And then place a mining camp on the gold. Because he's, he's probably just going to use the market for his eco all game. He, is at, he has actually sent a few villagers to those trees now. And what does Bloodless do? So Bloodless makes it to Castle Age. Yeah, there's Huang buying the wood. Mining camp, nice. Three monasteries for Bloodless. Who's going to get Town Watch. And we'll know that Conquistador is going to be coming out of that castle. But in the back of your mind, when you're... When you're bloodless here, you have to realize Huang is not known for good economy. 
So he will likely idle his TC. And that you have received additional villagers twice now. You received plus two when you made it to feudal. You received plus two now when you've made it to castle. So you do already have a vill lead. We have Sanctity coming in, which gives the monks more HP. This TC will eventually go down. And Bloodless will recognize that and maybe plan about another TC. Now we have to pay attention to how Huang chooses to play this because Huang might see this and say, I don't know if I can attack, but the thing is, it all does depend on the conversions and how good the micro is. And there's always a little bit of RNG, a little bit of luck involved with the conversions too. Okay, now Bloodless has gone for conversion, lost a monk just like that. Conks are just going to destroy. It's so much easier to play from Huang's current position. You just control one army and shoot. The monks, you have to click separate targets. And Huang's now buying stone. Is he going to tower this? Interesting choice. Yeah, I don't think having a little bit of extra pierce armor is helpful at all against Kongs. Not a unit that does 16 damage. But man, if these all these Kongs get converted, Bloodless. It's such a smart tower from Huang, though. Because the tower can help against the monks. And now Huang should just use the tower against the monks here. He's sitting underneath the TC. Still no conversions have come in. A lot of these monks are still running. The monks are actually healing each other, though. No way. And now Bothus has to go for conversions again. He's got two in his sights. He gets two. Gets three. The tower will go down. And then the villagers from Huang could go down. Are you kidding me, Bloodless? Is Bloodless actually going to make this happen? And Huang's food eco is disastrous. And it's 34 eco versus 32. Bloodless might not have a TC soon. But Bloodless has more monks on the way. And Bloodless is actually held against this for now. Key word is obviously for now. This monk can't get a conversion. This monk can't get a conversion. They're waiting for faith. Huang will know that. But Huang also has to avoid what used to be his conks. More monks are on the way. Now Huang needs to back away. And what does Huang do? Bloodless has no town center. But he can actually win this game. He converts one conquistador. He converts another conquistador. And now he's going to escape and he's going to place a TC over there. Smart thinking. The guy really needs food eco, though. If he wants to create more villagers, but... Now, if I'm Huang, I start to add eco now. And I start to think, uh-oh. You know, maybe I, I, I have to win the game by taking it late. So, do you guys feel like the Bengali bonus helped in those situations there? It's really tough for me. Um, I don't think it helped that much. I just think Bloodless did a great job at healing. There might have been a couple instances, though, where the monk stayed alive because of the extra armor. And maybe, just maybe, like, you know, taking a little bit less damage adds up in those situations. Like, that could have ended the game right there. Fervor's now here, so the monks will be faster. Huang's really playing with fire. Ooh, I don't know if Huang can get back to his castle. Ooh, no way. That's one. That's two. And honestly, unlucky. I guess in the end, it was three kills. Four kills in the end. My god, Bloodless is playing like a beast. But yeah, a little unlucky there from Bloodless not to convert the whole army of four there. Yeah, I agree. If they can just take one more shot, that could make the difference. And I just don't know the math on it. Also, these two villagers, what the... These two villagers are making a sneaky TC on the resource that Bloodless needs most, which is food. Huang's still making conks. But Huang has to make one more conquistador before he is on par with the number of conquistadors his opponent has now. His four conks are chasing down the three conks from Huang. And now what's Huang do? Go monks for his own units? The Bloodless is playing like a beast here. Wow, he's, he's playing really well, I have to say. This TC's up. These villagers will need to go to that gold. This TC's up. Still microing. Somehow, a villager didn't die there. Somehow, again, a villager didn't die. Monks are here, though. And, and this does get a little more complicated to micro monks when you have eco to worry about. But Huang's like, which way do I die with these things? Dang. Oh, man. Honestly, Bloodless is super unlucky. Uh, on a different day, all of those units are converted. And on a different day, the units before were converted as well. That's crazy. Like, it's taking a long time to get conversions here. 
Okay, so, you know, Huang, still one TC, is now coming forward with more villagers. This makes me think he wants to drop a castle on the opponent's new town center or in here. All this is doing a great job to just sit out of the castle range. Look at the confidence running by the castle fire. So many people would be scared of it. Could still turn around any moment. Bloodless dropping a third TC now. He's scared of this area being pestered by the Konks. And those villagers now have to run home. And okay, so Huang says, well, okay, the, the castle won't work now. I have to go for a boom. And so now Huang's going to add the TC. With the lack of food eco for Huang, it's really hard to make anything else. Like, you're committed towards, towards Kongs at the moment. You'd have to make a barracks and a stable. Oh, God, Huang loses another... Again, those monks just... Okay, maybe not, but for the most part, dodging a lot of castle fire. What do you go with in the long run if you're Bengalis? I mean, obviously monks are good, but let's say this game goes on for another 15 minutes. What are you making? You make spearmen to protect your monks from a light cap switch? I like how Huang got uh, fletching for a bit of extra castle range. That's helped a couple times, too. Three monks are here. I think Huang's realizing that that's his best bet. Here he goes. Bloodless trying to loop back to his TC. He's booming right now, guys. He is focusing on his economy, so you're not going to see that perfect monk micro anymore. Despite how good Bloodless has played, Huang has 24 kills and 8 deaths. That should tell you everything about how crazy this strategy is. And Huang... No eco upgrades whatsoever. Is about to place a lumber camp for the first time in the whole game. <laughs> Dang. Uh, Connor says, uh, sub T90 in chat. Appreciate all the content you put out, man. Keep it up. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Glad you could make it for this one. Seems like this one might go late. And I'm really excited to see what the Bengalis will do. Because now their elephant archers are cheaper. And someone reminds me what bonus they have with the elephant archers, though. So they've got... I think it's attack faster. No, no, no. That's Dravidian. Dravidian elephant archers attack 20 or 25% faster. The elephants for the Mingalis. I think it's they regen. Like they heal up or something. I, again, forgive me because, you know, they're, they're Dravidians and Bengalis. In some ways, I confuse. I feel like their tech tree, I fully understand. Their units and all that. But the unique techs I'm still catching up on. They take less bonus damage, and with the unique tech, they attack faster. Okay, that's what I thought. Wait, with the unique tech, they attack faster, not regen. Oh, the Dravidians regen, too. Okay, my bad, my bad, my bad. Okay. Conks came in. Long still has so many conks, and it's like the monks... Bit of a weird spot for Bloodless to be. He found this TC when he lost that conk. I guess he wants to go for a siege push here or something, but... If Wong were to buy stone and drop a castle here and there's no monks, this could be a disastrous for Bloodless. I don't know if he should have moved out and... Here comes Wong. It's a great... Like, Wong's game sense is so good for the situations he finds himself in. Himself in. And now Bloodless is like, well, crap. Now Bloodless is getting a relic, which is kind of cool, but who knows if he can even bring that relic home. He's got three separate areas to focus on economically, which really has his focus split. There's no way I see him denying this castle, and I think he's just realized that now. And for Huang, this should make it easier for him to catch up in economy. Does Pikes... I, I remember the name of the tech. Does Pikes do anything beyond the attack speed, guys? I played with Bengalis last week. I forget, but I think it's looking better and better for Huang. Those monks needed to stay home, I think, for Bloodless. This is his eco lead right here. It's all going to get shot down. And it's so difficult to be able to boom when you have TCs in different areas of the map. And then you've got monks in the middle of the map. I actually think Bloodless wants to go for like some type of castle drop. TC in the middle! <laughs> He's like, here, Huang, I'll do all the work for you. I'll just bring all my villagers right to you. Meanwhile, Huang is going to try and wall Bloodless in so Bloodless can escape with these vills. I think Bloodless could run this way, though. I mean, I'm sure villagers would die, but they all wouldn't die if they were to go this way. Um, 
Okay, so it's Ratha's and Elephant units attack 20% faster. Okay, gotcha. Lots of heavy pressure here from Huang. He's he's hunting. He's a hungry boy. He's looking for these villagers. He knows they'd probably run this way. This is a really smart call from him. But now, I guess Bloodless could run this way in theory. Bloodless is still creating villagers from this town center too. He's probably just using the select all villager hotkey. Or select all TC hockey to do that. Oh, God. Wong is trying to trap him. <laughs> Wong's making a gate. Run, villagers. If you survive with some of them, it'll be okay. Another a house now. Now, the Kongs could get converted, but not probably not all of them unless it's perfect. Wong with the gate, but villagers escape. It's a jailbreak. It actually ends up being really good for Bloodless. Wow, Bloodless took care of the whole group of conquistadors. And will survive with villagers to be able to go to stone. Dang. I just love how Huang has no clue his opponent is here. That is a spectator thing. This is so funny to me. A castle is needed for both. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Bloodless sells off his resources. You know where to drop it, Bloodless. You drop it right here in his face. Don't drop it over there. Yeah, you can drop it right there. That's perfect. And now I think Huang has to drop his own to respond to this. Right? Like, you build faster. I think you have to get it up fast. Oh my god, Huang doesn't notice it. Wait, now he notices it. So he wanted to drop another one forward. And now he notices. So it's at 50% for Bloodless. This one's at 30% for Huang. Huang's will complete. Meanwhile, these villagers, I guess, are just going to go mine gold now. <laughs> Bloodless is a 30 vil lead. I think Bloodless's castle will complete, but it'll be very close here. And I think... The correct decision for both players would be to go for some type of siege. Castle barely completes. I remember for the Bengalis, they don't get regular rams. Oh god, not the monks. Rip. Uh, they don't get regular rams. So it's really beneficial to be in Huang's shoes because both players are lacking food eco. But they have wood and they have gold. Bloodless doesn't have a siege workshop yet. Bloodless doesn't have a siege workshop. There's a definite chance that this is gonna this castle is gonna end up going down, and then his TC could go down. Like now he's gonna go siege, but the I, I'm not impressed with the siege elephants or civilizations other than the Gurjaras. And the Gurjara elephants are OP, in my opinion. And it it's not that the siege elephants don't do decent enough damage. It's more so the cost, right? So they're like way harder to get in Castle Age. And then also think, you know, you're normally spending food and gold to get blacksmith upgrades and make a lot of different types of units. So it's really tough to make those elephants with other types of units in most cases. Well, there's buying food now so he can make the armored elephants. Huang made the siege workshop even before the castle was completed. So he knew, and he's going to take that castle down. Bloodless still has to deal with these conks. Huang can win this game. He might be 40 villagers behind, but he has a lot of control right now. And who's to say he can't, like, ram this down and send in conks? I mean, that's 40 villagers right there. He does need to keep microing those conquistadors, though. And this is kind of funny. This is a great African clearing game. Wong is microing where he can. But, uh oh Bloodless' is monk micro is so good. He probably has every single monk on a different control group. One through nine, I bet. Or, I guess, in this case, one through six. Yeah, maybe it's one through nine. He's got four more on the way. Huang needs to stay away, but his rams could keep moving. We do have the rams from Bloodless, though. How will Huang stop that? These things are moving in now. Huang doesn't have army there right now. Huang was able to get away with his conquistadors, though, and he's worried about this area, so he's dropping a tower. And Bloodless seems more interested in using the rams against the rams than actually taking out the castle. But as I say that, we do have Bloodless. Well, kind of doing both, right? We'll take care of the rams, and now we'll go in after the castle. But now the conks are here. And I feel like with villagers and conks, I'm not sure if the elephants would be enough. The Grajaras are just insane. It's OP, in my opinion. Because they still almost do as much damage as the siege ram does in Castle Age. But I, I think Bloodless says, well, you know what? I've got my winning unit. It's the monks. And I think Huang needs to understand, I've got to go for something against that. 
right? Like, there's a castle here now from Bloodless. Does Huang see this? Oh, Huang wanted to castle here instead. It's just like before. Does Huang notice this area is being castled? Um, Man, Bloodless has played out of his mind here. Oh, that's such an important castle. I think if I were in Bloodless's shoes, I would just sell all that wood and buy food. Just get him. You got... Really important positions to lock down. Imp is going to ideally help you and run away. <laughs> run away. So what? He has a 40 vil lead and his 40 villagers are now leaving this corner. <laughs> Whoa, man. This is so crazy. So I think Bloodless will still go Imp. He definitely wants to make a push towards the castle. Wong added siege behind the castle, though, so the Rams won't have a ton of success. Well, this is actually hoping that Huang doesn't notice and that he can get his monks in close to convert the siege because he researched redemption. But look at this. Huang is distracted. And two elephants go in after the mangonels. And this might actually finally be the game as Bloodless has coped so well with all of these attacks from Huang. You believe the Megali armored elephants are actually better than Gerjara's because of the faster attack? Yeah, yeah. I think like... Again, my main issue is just the cost in the castle age. I think that the unit's really good. It's just, it's a bit more awkward to make in the situation we saw it earlier. But yeah, if they have additional attack speed, well, I don't know because mounted units do 40% extra bonus damage. So I don't know. Like, Gurjara versus Bengalis is probably still pretty close. But anyways, like, it's not like Bloodless didn't get the economy here. The farms might not be the prettiest ever, but Bloodless has used that additional economy well, and uh, Huang's going to try and go imp here. Huang's about to have one town center to choose from. Huang probably getting some kills, so still thinking, all right, I've got a chance. Huang does click imp with the only TC that's remaining. Huang does have three castles to, in theory, produce conquistadors. Also, looks to me like Huang stole his opponent's farms here, which is classy. Um, but what does imp give Huang here? I would say Trebs, but I don't think there's going to be many Conquistadors around by the time Imp comes in, and then Trebs are not going to be able to move out from this corner, are they? Dang. You know exactly what Huang's going to do, but it's just really hard to stop it, and Huang has been pretty much full pressure the whole game, and Bloodless has made this look super easy. Actually, he hasn't made it look easy. It looks really hard. <laughs> also, this is this is Huang's Imp TC. No way. No way. Wong's not going to make it to him. You can repair the elephants. I kind of wish you could. It would look really funny. The TC is going to go down. And Huang immediately calls the GG. What a statement. I think Huang would have called the GG anyways. Uh, you know, because his opponent hit him before him. And he has no army now. But dang, what a game. That was sick. This guy was backed into a corner. Lost his starting TC. And was relying on only conversions. And he actually worked out for him. I think him expanding to this town center was clutch. I don't think Huang knew about that. Um, so I, I actually kind of want to look back at that. Because I remember there were two villagers around there. Because even I didn't notice it until the TC was going up. So. Okay, yeah. So I don't know how long these villagers were here exactly. But when did they run over? Were they the ones on the shorefish? They were, they were just idle the whole time. Uh, let's go back further. Wow. Yeah, so my guess is they were the ones on the shorefish. And then when the castle was about to be dropped, Bloodless just clicked them there. Yes. Uh, sort of. Yep, sort of. And so, yeah, anyways, they just sat there for who knows how long. But that was a really important area for Bloodless because he ended up teasing some food. And he kind of had everything else that he needed but food. And yeah, look at that. Yes. Oh, I'm going backwards again. I'm so sorry. Anyways, you, you you understand the point. I I was trying to fast forward, and I because they weren't moving, I didn't even realize how that was working. 95 kills for Huang, 34 units lost. So a 3-1 to one KD for Huang still loses the game because Bloodless had how many conversions this game? Uh, 32 conversions. Clowns are terrifying with their monks. 
but also had good economy with more wood, food, and gold. Bengalis are seen as a Ziv that's weaker on Spanish and Nomad situations. Huang plays the same strategies all the time, so you should give a lot of an advantage to someone like Huang there. And Bloodless still got the victory. Talk about overcoming some crazy situations there. Man. I always find this interesting, right? Like, you look at this and you say, huh, Huang's way faster. But this is a, yet another situation where I'll say that APM doesn't necessarily matter in terms of what Capture Age picks up. It says it's a fact, effective actions permitted, but Bloodless was everywhere there. I think he was really spamming the Select All TC Create Villager Hotkey, which is why it probably didn't show uh, as much as it shows Huang. Huang recently started booming by toggling through town centers. But most other players are using this, the hotkeys for it and, and not moving around quite as much there, which allows them to focus on the monks and whatever else we saw in this game.